<laughs> Welcome back. Welcome back to Pass the Isle. And I'm Kevin. I'm Meg. And we got another exciting show for t- for today. <laughs> <laughs> Spoke too fast. Okay. You yeah. got excited, huh? Yeah. Yeah. That's okay. So uh, today we're talking about um, within your relationship, if you feel being second a uh, second class citizen. I don't know oh. if you heard of that before. Yes. That's that's pretty like yeah, I never Did heard of that. Did you just hear of that? Yeah, I just heard of that for the <laughs> first time. Being a um like either one of uh your significant other will feel like they're a second class citizen in the relationship. Mm-hmm. And um alongside with that topic, um uh, we can also talk about interdependence. Mm. Yeah. That's a good one. Yeah. Nice job, Em. Yeah, it's pretty cool uh, <laughs> to come across all these uh, different topics mm-hmm. and uh, always trying to improve our relationship, but also uh, being aware of all these things that we've done in the past. Yeah. And we uh, uh, solved them or still, you know, or either one of us is still um, trying to uh, to fix bad habits. Yeah, 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 and that and that's a good thing you you point that out. Those are habits because sometimes it feels like like if ever you get hurt in your relationship, sometimes it feels like it's spiteful, like they're doing it on purpose or something, mm-hmm. and you take it personally. But I think it's really always good to remember that if you're in a in a good relationship, I can't speak for all of them, but I always knew that, or I always should have known that they were just bad habits. Yeah, let's uh, dive in about your knowledge of what a uh, second class citizen. Okay. So my understanding of it is like um you always feel second rate. Like you're getting um like you're measured in a double standard. Uh you get less than, you're always thought of second or last or just not considered or prioritized in in all the things of life. If you're a second class citizen, that means like in all areas of your life and your daily experience of how you experience life is second. Like you're just not thought of or considered. Mm-hmm. That's my yeah, understanding. And, and that's pretty spot on. And it you, usually from uh, what I read and uh, what we experienced in our relationship and what you brought upon like in the past mm-hmm. um, about our relationship is that uh, when you first get into the relationship, mm-hmm you're just a normal human being uh and you know you're just in the dating phase right yeah but then all you think about when you're dating this person you're just thinking about yourself first right like you're not you're either you don't know how to date or you don't know how to be with someone in a relationship yeah you don't know what a longevity relationship is like yeah so all you think about is yourself and your needs yeah and then same with the other person they're thinking about themselves and their needs yeah and uh so what happens to that it it builds some confliction and then it it builds something that's called uh codependence Mm -hmm. uh so you're just always thinking about yourself putting yourself first uh before others which is your significant other Mm -hmm. so what that happens is the uh your your uh person that you're in a relationship with uh feels like what you said uh they get like half of you versus all of you Mm. i thought i thought codependence meant that you depended each upon each other too much for yeah like everything yeah yeah i mean that's what it means okay uh but then when it comes to like your your attention your uh uh what you need from them and everything yeah um it it becomes 50 percent. yeah yeah so that's what uh second second class means I see. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Like I would feel such like if anybody else didn't support my vision or if anybody didn't really understand my pain or something, the fact that you didn't for so long, it was just like a big deal. And I don't like I wondered why, like it mattered so much what what you thought, Mm -hmm. you know, I was like really dependent, codependent on your approval. Yeah. Or like. And then, uh, yeah, and then that's what I read was that's the number one uh, problem, right, in a relationship is that you should fulfill, as an individual, right, you should try to fulfill your own needs. Yeah. And you 
you can't depend on each other all the time to fulfill your own needs. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, and then that's what kind of uh, caused problems in most relationship that you're just not conscious of it. Mm-hmm. Um, well, let's talk. Let's talk about our specific. Yeah, let's talk. Um, yeah, I well, let's talk about that, but also let's talk about uh, going back to when you were raised. You you did you ever felt being second class? Um, no. When you know, like growing up, about uh, saying like, "Oh, I want to do art," things like that. No, I think I didn't. I I don't feel second class about that. I think um, I think maybe Jenna may have felt second class because I'm first born, and um, when the first born is your first, like you just get most of the hype, you get most of the care, maybe, mm-hmm. but not actually. <laughs> I would say care or maybe time. Maybe get most of the time, not care. Care is equal. Um, But like for me to feel second class within my family, I don't think so. I don't think I felt like that. Yeah. I felt like I was supposed to do something like say become a doctor or whatever or do something in a professional field and go to school and all that stuff. And um not pursuing art, I really don't have any resentment about that. It was just like that was something I was really, I was really passionate about it, but uh, and not feeling support to pursue it as much as something else. I think my logic was okay with it. Mm-hmm. It was like you when you were like, oh, I'm going to do the logical, responsible thing, which is to get a degree so that I could pay for whatever, right? Like, I would think I was okay with that, yeah. even though it wasn't. And then I wasn't terribly, like, hurt about it. I think I was more hurt that um, I was maybe doing college for the wrong reasons. Not too hurt about, like, oh, I'm, I didn't do art. It was more like, oh, I'm not doing it for me. I'm actually doing this for you. I'm getting the degree for you. I see. But uh, I soon to forgave all that because this, it, it spurned this life. Like, yeah. I met you, right? That yeah. was the biggest turning point, I think. A, a really positive outcome on going to college for somebody else when it's like well i needed to yeah just like steven i'm like i feel like he needs to because it's you're just gonna meet you're most likely gonna meet better people Mm -hmm. that are ambitious and can challenge you and that's exactly what it did for me besides all the learning and like the education and shit so i i felt uh a second class citizen uh when i was younger not particular on my mom's side but more on my dad's side side. just even although i'm like the eldest sibling in my immediate family but then when we always hang out as uh an entire family i have all these i see what you're asking uh, me i have all like a lot of my cousins are a lot older right so obviously they're going to treat me like i'm the younger sibling and yeah that's when i i will feel uh within our relationship um in my family relationship that I would feel like a second class citizen. Mm. Like I never get or have a say mm. uh, to, you know, like, oh, let's do this. You know, this is fun. But, you know, oh, like, you I don't see. you don't get that. Yeah. Yeah. You, know, I you see. don't get um, a voice. Let's see. I basically. See. Yeah. And I don't know if in that way. Right. It kind of uh, influenced me uh, when it comes to getting into a relationship where you know, you want power, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. You're like, you never had this power growing up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 So that's why I wanted to start from there. I see that in any way influence you. I, yeah. Okay. Now I know what you're asking. When I was growing up, I learned uh, hardcore how to be like second class and passive and to be ashamed and to be really shy when, um, like, you know how my cousin's kind of like you before, like kind of a bully. And uh, that's what that's what she did. And I don't um, I understand why she did it, because her upbringing was, uh, you know, she was bullied basically from her father. And, so uh, that's the only way she knew. Is Just that like the you. only person. Um, nah, yeah, I think so. And then I think I was starting to remember why um, I, I got so shy about dancing. And I think uh, there was a different cousin who said, it's OK that you don't know how to dance. And I was like, and I was on the telephone with her and this is, and I was like, why do you say that? In my head, I'm like, 
I don't know how to fucking dance, you motherfucker. <laughs> no, <laughs> but head. in my yeah. head, I'm like, no, I, I didn't actually say that. I was just like, um, I would say that now. But um, in my head, I was like, oh, I don't. Okay, I guess it's wrong. And then I think from there, I never want to. I didn't want to do karaoke. Mm-hmm. Like, she, I think she also said, it's okay that you don't know how to sing or something like that. Something like that. And like, it's not that I know how to sing. It's just like, I love singing and I love dancing. And I always did it when I was young. And I think I learned from these two cousins to be ashamed or um, scared or shy, or like uh, embarrassed or something. Yeah. And then um, just, yeah, always kind of treated second class, like, because mm-hmm. um, you're younger or something. And did you feel that? Yeah, definitely. Up, you felt it, right? Oh, yeah. So, I was like, uh, but I didn't know how to even voice it or i was like i guess this is how it is but you so you didn't even like you didn't have like the motive of like trying to retaliate no 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 i'm very passive already i'm a very like easygoing like i want i want to please you already yeah so like if i'm not pleasing the elder cousins or something like that i feel like i'm doing i'm a bad like i'm bad or something yeah so, uh, um, so you were, you were very responsible and very, I uh, tried to be, yeah. And you were very good. As I a tried kid. to be, yeah. I think I was like the complete opposite. Well, I think boys have different yeah. way of, you know, how they perceive things yeah. or how they perceive authority. Right. Yeah. You know, some boys can be different as well. And you all identify with, uh, with your father. And if your mm-hmm. father is more aggressive or something and he, d- and he's not passive, um, and he doesn't talk and stuff, then that's what you will emulate. That's your yeah, model. Right. That's so, true. Makes sense. Yeah. So who, who would you say influenced you to become more passive actually? Um, or that was just a natural behavior that you just adopted over I think that was, I think that, uh, I was already shy. Um, but shyness was just a part of you already, right? Yeah. Because I'm very introverted. I would just draw. I've been drawing since, um, preschool. Yeah. I have drawings of like Ninja Turtles and stuff. And, uh, so I think I'm naturally an introverted person. However, if you get me going, I can talk a lot, which is still true to this day in my adulthood. So it, it just kind of like, I think it grew from, um, learning or getting some kind of side comment that like cut cut it off and that I didn't question it. I didn't have any motivation or internal strength or I don't know any dialogue. I didn't have any like many friends or anything. And when we were growing up, you you had a lot of girl cousins growing up, right? We had we had those cousins there mm-hmm. and that was basically it. Oh wow. Yeah. Cuz so- we're the only families here in the states. Yeah. So every, everybody else stayed in their their native states or whatever, like out of out of the states and stuff. So yeah. um, that was it. So it was like very s- small, town. small world, small. Yeah, a very small, small town. world yeah. uh, growing up then. Yeah, very small. So everything was wow wins and new experience. Right. I get well and not too many Asians too to yeah. like go back and forth like, hey, you're Asian, you get spanked or hey, you're Asian. Is yeah. it strict? No, it's all white friends. Mexican you, friends. Yeah. I mean, Mexicans could probably relate, but I never really made any friends yeah. with Mexicans. So, and then black, right? So, but mostly white. Yeah. And uh, I think Mexican, yeah, but mostly white. Well, you never, I mean, even spoke about your experience to anyone, despite of like what oh, they yeah. are. Oh, yeah. Because we would, <laughs> I mean, it got around that Asians were strict. Yeah. And that most minority families, you did get spanked. So we would throw around those jokes like everybody yeah. does. Like, Oh, I got a B. That means it's an F, blah, 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 like yeah. that. And that would go around and stuff. But um, nothing, I didn't know how to develop real uh, friendships. Like the way that you did, you have a lot of like close friends and that mm-hmm. became your family. Like I have no experience with that. Oh, I always okay. had like one friend and I'm like, I'm going to keep you at distance. Because I just, I don't know. I, I never let anybody truly in. How How do you feel about that now? Like. I, th- I think it's natural for me. Like I'm good with one person at a time. Mm-hmm. Now in my adulthood, I'm trying to challenge myself to keep adding people, but not just because I want a number, but because I go, oh, cool. Like this person, I have this relationship with them. I still feel a need for this sort of relationship. So let me seek that out with other uh, women or something like that. So I try to do that now. Okay. But it's like, 
few and far between still yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now it's more work related and stuff or do you feel through you like a lot of my friends are through you but do you feel like it's getting more easier of oh it's definitely easier building relationships and because i know who i am now yeah yeah before i was so like somebody told me oh you're not good you don't know how to dance or so it's, it's okay you don't know how to sing i was like i don't even get to try or whatever you know like so i didn't know who i was and i didn't have the inner strength to go and ask the questions or discover it except mm -hmm. in my own little world and i didn't share it with anybody which was like drawing back in the day oh cool so yeah but yeah so we both experience so, well you you experience a version of me making you feel uh, a <laughs> yeah. second class yeah and i just experienced older siblings just i'm um, just like pushed back really i mean i was basically the steven in the 90s got you yeah. well i see that dynamic when we go when we just went out right to the 80s bar yeah and you can just tell well i know nina is the elder and all that stuff yeah. right you know that's been kind of run in the show since forever her, yeah. and, her and probably kelly right so like um mainly her mainly, her. mainly her. <laughs> <laughs> but like um yeah, like you just go with the flow. Yeah. And there's there's such an age gap too between you two. Yeah. And huge so age gap. but but what it's nice to see between yeah. all of you guys and Nat and Natalie too is just like they're they so just want the best for you like now in their in their adulthood I see that. And well, was, for everyone. For, for everyone, everyone, right? Yeah. And they try to balance that and I think yeah. that's that's how the elders always Yeah. looking at situations like I need to please everyone. I need to make sure or whatever. Yeah, yeah. In, in some ways, although we don't see each other that that much, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I feel like there is always a connection when you're together. Yeah, and yeah. even though th your entire life of not seeing, you only see your cousins. Uh, for well, f on my side, on my dad's side, yeah, I only see them like probably five times most a per year. That's pretty good. But it's crazy that five times for the, your entire life. <laughs> you still have a really good connection for some some reason right yeah versus not seeing your cousins like once every week or something right right yeah yeah well i, I think it's it so goes different. back to when you guys yeah. were growing up and that's so strong when you're young yeah it, it's weird right that it's it, it's like that <laughs> oh, yeah i can be in the, like if i if Gemma showed up today yeah at the door i'll just it's like yeah it was like yesterday that you know that we started hanging out or something it's like Cause we're so tight you and even that like we barely saw Jeff when we were growing up yeah. but now it's so easy to just talk or there's a there's a connection you know yeah so so cool. now so now uh taking all of that experience i'm taking my experience right now mm -hmm. uh now we're headed into our relationship when uh we first started yeah um i know you were very passive when we <laughs> first started um also you didn't know how to um, uh, express your emotions, express your problems, your feelings. So it, it was hard. Uh, I thought relationships was that way. Oh yeah. How you first started it, right? <laughs> yeah. How you were passive. I'm like, yeah. okay, I guess in the relationship you'll always be passive, mm -hmm. and then I'll always be <laughs> surprise. <laughs> yeah, and then I'll always be the one that is leading. That's or leading. That's saying. Has and, the say. And then. For that, that really didn't do any pattern interruption. Mm -hmm. um, and then it felt very codependent. Mm -hmm. and, or I felt like you were codependent on you, on me. Yeah. Uh, which you probably didn't even thought of that. And you, I did. You, oh, okay. I resented it too. I was yeah. like, I don't like how I've become yeah. attached to you in this way that I feel like I'm not independent. Where I had to ask, when I had to ask you for money, yeah. right? One time and you're like, and that's when the power, I think, uh, and we had many conversations about money between us. Yeah. And that was a huge thing that was like building, building, building. And I didn't know how to um, talk about it because it was, it's a two way street. So I've built, we've built this castle that was built on that kind of relationship. Like I make the money. So I have the say, mm -hmm. you're the little woman, you just stay home and you cook and what, like, and that's a very traditional sense of a relationship. Like back in the day, that's normal um but, but now yeah. it was like now it's different now it's so different you know it's like the the, 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 the world dynamic, is different the, the dynamic yeah. the 
the understanding that we have with each other, it was just a, a big miscommunication. It was a big miscommunication now that I look back at it because, you know, like all you kind of think about is how are your parents mm -hmm. had their relationship? Mm -hmm. Like you said, they're always your first role model. Yeah. Yeah. Mine wasn't a really a role model, but I kind of <laughs> vaguely. It's a role model. Because, yeah. But even though they're not there. I knew it wasn't the perfect role model. It wasn't like the one that you should follow. But you still, <laughs> but you still innately follow yeah. because it's the only thing. Yeah. It's really the only teacher. It's subconsciously teaching But then you. it did miss some steps. So For it, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It definitely yeah. got cut off at sixth grade. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it so. continued. Yeah. It continued. Yeah. After he's gone at sixth grade, he's still teaching you that, oh, you can go. Yeah. Whether you whether you're gonna do that or not to somebody in your life, yeah, it's like you had that. You now have the option. Uh, like, if I can be blunt about it, that's the yeah. option because you've seen it done. Yeah, right. Like, so it's subconsciously teaching you that you can leave. Yeah. Right. And uh, the way that even though my parents are together, it's like I always have the option that I can leave because that's what's been thrown in our face for a million, like how many times, like the divorce rate, blah, 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 or mm -hmm. whatever. Um, but, you know, because we have, we can like squash all that and just run our relationship on our terms because we want to be here and we want to put in the work. Now it's different. Now all that stuff doesn't really, it's not an excuse anymore or it's not an answer or an option now it becomes like, oh, our our options are actually to work at it and get better or that's it. Like, yeah. that's the only option. Yeah. You know, you either learn and work at it and get better because this is it. Right. Yeah. So there's really no other option. Yeah. I think this is such a great topic mm -hmm. because I feel it, there's a lot to discuss. Yeah, there's a lot to discuss and yeah. it. it it comes. I mean, like sometimes it can come and in different forms yeah and How so? uh, what forms are you thinking like uh business forms i would say oh, okay yeah. yeah when it comes to your decisions right yeah and then me if like it, if it's just a habitual thing uh you, you kind of forget that you have a say in this company <laughs> you have decision making skills right that yeah. you think that is best for the company yeah but then, you know, we clearly, the only team when it becomes to steering the company a certain direction, mm -hmm. it's only between us two. It, yes. We don't have a third person kind of, um, what is that called again? Like refing? That over, overlooks, overlooks everything uh -huh. to see if if Like a checks biased. and balances and Yeah, stuff? like a check and balance or if your decision is biased or mine's biased. You know, like we don't have... A third uh, person to uh, mediate, basically, mm. our decisions I together. Think, I think that's okay. Yeah. Because um, I know that you have a certain way of how you like to run things. And yeah. I know that you've made allowances where you can change. And that's that's where I think the partnership is the whole like 50. It's not 50-50, but it's like, hey, you come your way, you come and I can come mine. right? Yeah. And so me coming my way where i had to uh i had to respect first you like respect you first in you know everything that you've done so and for me to come into the company you know i had to understand that first so like for me it's like uh boundaries like i know when i'm not supposed to cross a line oh yeah and uh, boundaries is another important thing yeah, yeah. you know I'm i'm not here to like sway all the power to me that's not why i'm here and i'm i always remind myself where sometimes i would feel my ego is like oh this is your idea like your idea or i don't know there's some weird thing that mm -hmm. that uh would happen between us where it's like my idea seeing it to fruition and having my name on it yeah. like there and i maybe think that's got, the artist in both of us yeah yeah i mean maybe it's also wording and how we present the term ideas Maybe it's just let's, you know, try to formulate uh, uh, like a different system of presenting ideas mm -hmm. versus an open discussion saying my, my, my and things like that. Right. And yeah. then that becomes uh, where the ego starts coming in right. into play. I think what I always try to tell myself is like it's, um 
you know, it's us. I like to use the word us, like yeah. I was telling you. It doesn't make a difference when you start changing your own language. Yeah, your own language, the words you use. Yeah. Um, or just say, oh, this is... This is an what idea is for us. Yeah, this is an idea for us, or this is best for the company. Yeah. And then formulate Yeah, that creating list. a boundary between yeah. you yeah. and your ego, because that's always yeah. there, and the company, which is what we like. I like how you said we work for the company. Yeah. Well, how, you know, it was so confusing at times where it was like, I'm, I know I'm not, I'm, I know I'm not supposed to uh, be super 100 percent dependent upon a man i know i'm not supposed to do that in this day and age like some some alarms start going off but we have this system where um and i would tell myself too like i would kind of like a i don't know for some reason not be strong enough to think like that what i do here in the company is worth it i think and that i had a trouble finding my own worth within the company and so <laughs> but see uh i'm trying to gather my thoughts there's so much that mm -hmm. goes down with this uh topic but um i think what i'm trying to say is that um being codependent or being 100 percent dependent upon my partner like that was scary so i said you know okay i hate I, I hate that feeling mm -hmm. naturally yeah like. or even carrying somebody else right oh, oh i have to <laughs> pay for you man what are you doing you know like and i i understood <laughs> yeah. how you may have felt in the past where it's like and why and why you would be like what is it for when i ask money right mm -hmm. so it's like and then I would get really offended. Like, I'm going to the fucking grocery <laughs> store to buy meat for us, right? Yeah. Like, I'd get all like high and mighty and shit. Well, that was that was during a time of like <laughs> many things going on. No, I mean, it's a perfect example yeah. where... It, which is, yeah, it's a good example. Um, but the, it's also a good example in a way that I shouldn't bring uh, my relationship uh, with my mother into our relationship well let's in not way. let's not yeah. go in, let me just talk about this example yeah. so you know because i think we're kind of all over the place right now but um still second class we're yeah, still second, talking about yeah. second class citizen here and i think feeling second class a lot of times is related to money if you haven't figured out how to have the conversation yet or to feel secure mm -hmm. that one person is quote unquote making more than you. Mm -hmm. And it was kind of like we took so long to come to the agreement on the same page to be like, we are both working for each other, you know? Mm -hmm. Like uh, it was confusing because, to finish my thought, it was, it's Kevin Levu Photography Inc., right? Yeah. And Sometimes you can't help because in your natural way of running the business, it's always been you making the decisions. And um, I had to learn to respect that first, which I, I didn't do that in the beginning because I was speaking in theory and I was forcing a lot of new ideas. And it was like, whoa, 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 you're changing everything. I brought it to this point. You know, I captained this ship and you're trying to steer it in all these different ways. Well, you know, like it, it's also... A little bit of my fault because i didn't know how to voice that that what you just said yes exactly. i never like i i get a little passive or i just don't think of it or i felt like i don't have that voice to say that to you yeah 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 yeah, yeah. and i also think like back to the last show I created such an unsafe environment for you to talk. So you're like, I'm not even going to try to form the words or think of the words or anything like that to bring it up. Um, cause I'll probably just get yelled at or something. And then, and then my argumentative skills, <laughs> they mm -hmm. jumped in comparison to yours at the time when I, uh, started to do a lot of speaking and I started to podcast. And then I felt on my end that I could talk circles around you and you'll mm -hmm. be like, blah, 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 what the fuck? Like I can't even rebuttal right yeah. in a debate. I would look at it as a debate Yeah. and I'm having a power, uh, surge or a power like a power trip yeah because i can speak better yeah right or i can form my argument better yeah and i, I found comfort in that because and i think uh, sometimes i get too 
to like power drunk on it Mm -hmm. because i never had that before oh now i can voice i can voice what i want right and i think uh, with women they should always have they have to advocate for their voice because that's the especially our generation we're shown to be quiet to not say anything sweep it under the rug but the problem becomes and when you use that skill to be unfair or to be unloving or to be unkind or not to, and not to empower your partner to do the same right so mm-hmm. when we didn't learn that until like very recently like hey you can talk to me <laughs> yeah you can rebuttal me and i'm not going to take it personally it may sting because we're human like whatever you say to me or i could get defensive but i know that that's temporary mm-hmm. And um, we're here together. We're here to work on this together, right? So um, I, th- I think with us feeling se- like I felt so second class that I build a resentment. And when I learned to argue, I used it. And I found power in that. I found power again like I had a voice. But it's not like you were intentionally taking away my voice or right. intentionally trying to push me down. Whenever we had to talk about money, you're like, I don't want to make you feel that way, right? Yeah. But I'm like, yeah, but you do these actions that make me feel small, right? I would say that. Small. Or like I have to like uh, always ask you, like you're at the altar and I have to approach you like this with (laughs) jewels and fruits (laughs) and be like, please, sir, can I have some more? Yeah. (laughs) So that's how I felt before, right? And uh, about the money thing. Yeah, I didn't like that feeling either. Right. I was like, Uh, we felt like at two different levels Mm -hmm. yeah yeah but it was part of like i was was telling my mom yesterday i said you know um i think a man will do that just because it's it's kind of natural in an alpha male to lead and i bought it i say animal like yeah it's a very (laughs) primal thing yeah and that's within all of us um to be like i'm the bread maker Mm-hmm. I make the decisions. What I say goes because I make the money, right? And mm-hmm. that's a very, it's a common thing. Yeah. Um, the problem is, is like when you don't consider your partner and you don't have a partner that can be like, like I say, I, I use the term uh, sit at the table with you. Mm-hmm. Like to me, I was like feeling like, oh, I have to, I'm at the kid's table or whatever because I don't make the money. Mm. And you would almost accept it. Well, I don't make I don't make all the money, so I guess it's okay. And you start rationalizing all this bullshit. Yeah. You start rationalizing a lot of like um, behavior. Yeah, you start taking advantage. Yeah. Of, of what you kept on saying to yourself, which is like almost the laws of attraction. Like you attracted it into yourself, and then people just pick up on it. Yeah, you you learn to be passive and you learn to be pleasing yeah and then you start accepting yourself that way yeah 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 exactly and then you resent it you resent it because you know angry Mm -hmm. and then it backlashes yeah and then starts you know coming out in all kinds of ways like putting away the dishes all mad (laughs) but then it all starts from yeah and what's what i'm reading it it, being that second class right Mm -hmm. it's up to you to feel first class yes yeah, mm-hmm. it's not up to your significant other to make you feel first class. It's like happiness. Yeah. Um, that's a big one. That's a good one. It's a good thing you pointed that out. Yeah. It's like it was up to me to value who I am mm-hmm. and to be like, no, no, no. I I know I, I do a lot in this company. I don't hear the recognition, so I need to ask for it, right? That's my love language. Mm-hmm. I need the recognition and uh, all my little hints are not working because it's passive. If I need to, if, and uh, if I want to speak your language, I need to be more direct. So I was like, I need you to do this, right? Mm -hmm. Finally, right? This year. But I had to get over my own fear of like what you're going to think of me or what you're going to say back to me. And, and after all my argumentative skills in debate, I would still fear what you're going to say or think. Because there's, I think there's just something always there that you learn when you're a child that speaking out is like, it's uncomfortable, you know, or you're you're uh, making shit hard right now. I think all, what kind of runs through a woman's mind when she's speaking up is like, am I being a bitch? Huh. 
they don't want to be seen as a bitch because yeah. there's that weird stereotype where it's like oh a woman speaking up again like what is it now or she's being too loud but if a man does it it's like oh he's he's standing up he's being strong he's being alpha male yeah whereas women are still i think seen you know in a, a demure passive like you're a daughter you know you're gentle you know you're supposed to just do what you say so i think we resent that so much sometimes it does come out in bitchiness and stuff because you're fed up mm -hmm. and you're just like i'm not gonna take it anymore you start to be bitchy and stuff but um what what's the bottom line is that you just want to be heard you want to sit at the table with your partner as equals and that's it yeah you know it's like it's, it doesn't get much more complicated yeah you than don't want to feel uh different levels in mm -hmm. your relationship yeah. yeah it'll eat at you it, it ate, would eat it ate at me and i didn't know how to like it ate at you because you knew you didn't know at the time like what you wanted to do Mm -hmm. start to eat at you there right oh yeah yeah mm -hmm. it wasn't the relationship yeah it was like mainly your problems of what am i passionate about yeah what, uh, what am i good at yeah um on top of that how can i afford things i want mm -hmm. <laughs> you know things like that i don't want to ask my boyfriend at the time for yeah. everything yeah yeah so it was and, like a, that, and a lot right? is like i didn't trust myself to i didn't learn how to trust myself again like i was always seeking out externally for somebody to come and mm -hmm. tell me what to do or something and i was like no i need to just figure shit out yeah and um i think eventually what i, I think what i finally realized was like um especially when we incorporated bells into kevin levu which was awesome because i i feel like i could finally do something well and it was making money so it was helping us and i felt like oh i'm finally contributing um in a in a way that i haven't before hmm. right and then i i would try to do things like plan trips for us because you were always the planner you would always do that and then i was like man i feel like i can't do anything hmm. and then believing like oh is it always going to be like this and i really didn't like that feeling yeah because i know i can i can be a leader when um i need to be and yeah. there are there are times in our relationship i was like i need to lead sometimes and planning to do stuff for us like it can't just always be you i i need to make my husband feel special right mm -hmm. so like it was it was so cool to uh realize that with the help of like john to make bells and uh, laces happen and then to actually again prove to you that i can sit at the table right and then I didn't, I was doing it spitefully in the beginning because I have resentment. I still have arrows in my heart. And then fi when I did it and we finally had the conversation over like sushi and stuff, that conversation. Um, and we, and I agreed to come into the company as full time and all that stuff. Um, I just realized like, yeah, this is what I always wanted to do is to work with you, but on equal grounds. Mm -hmm. But I think, um. I think you didn't have the language, but you also didn't have room yet. <laughs> I didn't have room yet. You didn't have room in your heart and in your head yet, mm -hmm. which was fine because like I still needed to develop all the skills that I do now yeah. in the company. And um, I think it was good timing, you know, and so. And it's also uh, another thing is that um, you went through a lot of obstacles and uh, through your podcast world of learning about marketing, about video marketing. Um business mindset i think yeah, that was one of mindset. the biggest ones that i don't i don't really touch upon yeah it was business mindset um your influencers everything right mm -hmm. so knowing me i wasn't like a person that liked to be educated mm -hmm. like i had a very big ego about someone telling me what to do or what to learn or be open to this right yeah i had to f fish for myself or <laughs> or something has to happen to the company and then for me to feel all like yeah uh rallied up to learn something new to motivate change mm -hmm. right but now i now i know that i have to be two steps ahead all the time yeah um but it, it was you that made all this you know made made the pump made the change like advocate the changes so well i felt that was it's fair you know yeah but it's good you know it's good that you know that you you found yourself that you need more self value 
you, you brought some self-awareness into yourself as well as you voiced that I, I should be more self-aware of how I'm <laughs> acting uh, every time you bring up a decision, mm -hmm. uh, the type of person that I am, because not a lot of people tell me what type of person I am until you came along and started telling me <laughs> uh, the person that I am. So it, it's good, you know, and that's that's the great thing uh, about being in a relationship, about um, having a significant other, because you don't have a person like that. Your, your person... It, if you're lucky, you have like a sibling that will tell you that you're an asshole or. But it's hard because they're, yeah. they're kind of close to you and like. They're different, right? Yeah. But then, um, yeah, not a lot of people will have that when they grow up, you know, yeah. like being um, or even find uh, someone that's willing to work uh, with you. <laughs> yeah. 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 Willing to work with you, willing to sympathize also. Uh, try and be at the same level all the time together. Yeah, it's yeah. pretty. It's a lot of hats. It's a lot of hats to wear. Mm -hmm. What we do. Yeah. Yeah. It's amazing. I mean, right? relationship is very intricate. Yeah. Yeah. The longer you're in it, it, it blossoms. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I remember every time where uh, or I'm shooting a wedding and uh, like a 72 year old would uh, say a speech about his marriage of being like 40 years into marriage. He's like, it gets better as you get older yeah. and, <laughs> and you know, like you don't understand that because <laughs> we're, we're just, <laughs> you'll never understand yeah. at this age. Yeah. Like, not at this so age, young. but then, you know, that person is correct. Once you work on it, once you guys, uh, figure yourself out, mm -hmm. um, yeah, things it's like, I don't want to compare our relationship to a dog, but then once you, you know, know how to take care of that dog, that dog becomes an amazing dog. Mm. right but so, it starts with you yeah it starts with yeah. with us it starts with a good pet owner yeah <laughs> yeah yeah it starts with good good foundation good bones yeah yeah good definitely bones. so i mean just like as young as we are we just kind of set the tone yeah. uh off-centered yeah starting off and then slowly but then it does take one person to make that initiative yeah to speak up yeah the the courage you have to have courage like to lead in your relationship and know that um when it's your time when it, when you're up to bat you know it's ready to go like it's game time show time you need to perform and i i like that that we have this dynamic between us like it's it's my thank you too because you were you worked really hard for us i think i remember when we first like our second day together and you got me a cake, like and like a cake on one week and a cake on the next week. <laughs> <laughs> well, you already know it was like, oh, it's for him. <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't Just believe like that at eat. the time. <laughs> like, ooh, look what I got. <laughs> you, me. <laughs> but um, I remember uh, when you were you start telling me all these things, like I'm so inspired to go pursue my um my dreams and stuff like that. And I was like, that's cool. Like, um, because of our relationship, you mm -hmm. know, like, uh, to me, it felt like, um, after the whole serenading and we made our relationship official and everything, like you were like skyrocket, like, yeah, you were go for it. And I you was were like, like a cheerleader. Yeah. <laughs> like, I mean, you, something in me, like yeah. something that you did. Yeah. I just like freaking went for it like <laughs> crazy. I think I was just so um, enamored because, yeah. you know, when I wrote all the things on the paper, I was like, oh, shit, the secret is real. <laughs> and I thought oh. I thought it was amazing. And that's how I got to move into the house, too. And I thought the house was amazing. And yeah. I thought this new life, this new step and that I, I had made this goal, like, I'm going to go move to the OC. Mm -hmm. I barely know you. And I'm going to make friends. And I'm going to just go. I'm going to start from there. Like, I don't know what else. Because there was yeah. a, so much bad shit had happened. And then um, when, I, when things were kind of falling into place. And you were so, like, you, you were just so ambitious. You know, it was like. Oh, this is so different. Well, something, yeah, something sparked mm -hmm. was you probably sparked the ambitious part. That's cool. It's like, yeah. and I. Uh, because I was bored <laughs> in nursing. <laughs> yeah. I think, yeah, and boredom does create something. It, yeah. It, it creates uh, ambitious. Yeah. Yeah. 
you or need you, to go find unless something. Unless you're just going to be bored all the time. Which is, some people can tolerate that. They, can, they have yeah. a high tolerance towards boredom. Yeah. Uh, but boredom always eats at me. I think as long as I grew up, I, I was in multiple sports. I was in like four different types of martial arts. Yeah. Like yeah. I was so bored. Well, you, your mind is like, you know. Yeah, it's always, always racing. Searching. Yeah. It's thirsty, always racing. thirsty. Thirsty. Yeah. It's always like willing to learn. But yeah, that's my thank you because, you know, and I, I remember from the beginning too, and uh, those are the times where you were like, oh, so when do you, like, do you, do you want to get married or do you want to have children? I was like, I don't want to have, I don't really, I don't want to have kids. And I think I want to get married when I'm 30, right? I think I yeah. said that to you and you're like, why 30? <laughs> <laughs> but then, um, and I think you started to, you know, you had such a responsible way about saving and I think you were, you know, you were very future minded and. Mm -hmm. I wasn't thinking too far ahead. I knew I really was committed to you because when I'm in a relationship, I just get really committed. I don't look anywhere, even on the first day. I'm yeah. like, boom, I'm I'm there. And so it's my it's my thank you. And I love to work hard for us because you worked so hard for us in the beginning. Yeah. So like I love to go to work and I love to do what I do now because it's for us. And I know now after the the talk and all the talks that we've had in the past year that it's it's us like i'm doing this for us you know yeah and i'm i'm happy that we're here yeah and uh everything that i thought of when i was 21 or 22 it all lined up <laughs> what'd you think of when you were 21 22 i was like i wanted a house by 29 <laughs> <laughs> yeah i wanted you know to own something by 29 yeah yeah i think my parents just Put that in my head yeah. when I was a lot younger that, oh, you must get a house yeah. when you're this old or, you know, all these milestones, right? That's cool. And I was like, I want these milestones, mm -hmm. you know, and it felt very rewarding. Yeah. But getting this house, yeah, it was a little different, you know, like I, um, when you were 22, you didn't think about prices rising. No. You, didn't th <laughs> you thought every house that you see is always going to be that price It's always going to be oh i like, didn't even look at houses yeah then i was just not even at, at yeah. that level but my mindset was yeah, like you oh, were there it's always going to be steady it's always going to be around this and mm -hmm. then by the time we were 29 it was a different ball game yeah 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 but that that was just to show how future tense i was and um and you have to kind of live in the present to kind of learn yeah right of what's happening now mm -hmm. um and just be uh future tense but not too futuristic yeah uh just be responsible yeah be but, responsible you know but still. probably just a year and a half futuristic <laughs> in a way <laughs> yeah whatever works for you <laughs> yeah but it does motivate uh it is motivating yeah, yeah uh to know that those are goals mm -hmm. and they're reachable goals yeah and they're just not goals that you just never accomplish yeah, yeah. well i i rely on you for that mm -hmm. you know i think i'm 100 percent like i've learned to be so um like depended upon that how you're so future-minded about things like house prices and stuff because mm -hmm. all my mind is occupied occupied with emotion stuff yeah <laughs> and that's why i think we're a good fit because like with well, you great. it's like yeah. zero emotionality taking yeah. up space in your brain a lot in your brain is very logical um financial yeah and so it so you know it's okay where when I ask you for some emotionality to fulfill my needs, you know, I should be patient with it because I know your brain is filled with all the other things that mine is not. <laughs> yeah. But there's still, I mean, there's, there's still emotions, but there's, but yeah. it's like this, you know, like a yeah. yin yang thing. Yeah. Like that's why I think we're a good team. Yeah. You know? But I, I feel uh, more and more as uh, we start splitting up task and everything, it, it's been allowing me to breathe and, also open doors mm -hmm. now that we're on the same level now we're considered first class together mm -hmm. and having that mindset of feeling that you're in the same class the same group um it it does attract better things yes yeah yeah and it does attract that you can go together like you can go far together, together. Yeah. um mm -hmm. just like how you you were saying when we were at different classes you're I was like so ambitious that you just like went straight and 
no one was going to get in your way, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, yeah. You know, we had to uh, sacrifice some, yeah. uh, re- some of our relationship emotionality in the relationship. We were still yeah. very together, and like, you know, we would still you would still make it a point to, you know, we would do something, yeah, together, you know, uh, even though things were not being really said, yeah. But at least going through the motion and and uh, doing something, you yeah. Know, until all the things came out, but you know, that's that's a sacrifice. Like it's it's never perfect. Like that's mm-hmm. the trade off, and I'm happy we did that. I don't regret that. That we are learning it late, quote unquote late. I think it's never late. It's like. Mm-hmm. I, I always joke like, oh, yeah, 10 years to learn this lesson. But, you know, it's not late. It's not. N- n- not everyone starts a business that young. Right. Yeah. There's so many other factors to consider. And like, again, not to compare. Yeah, it's not. We're not here to compare our relationship to everybody else. We, sh- we share it. And that's cool. Um, and we look at stats and we look at articles and all this stuff. But it's really us and how we want to run our relationship. And that that goes for anybody. It's like it's so easy to compare mm-hmm. to other people, but you need to do what's right for you. And like for us, yeah. we learn this lesson and um, in a way it's just like, it's cool because it's like, cool. It's coming at the right time. Mm-hmm. Maybe you couldn't handle it before. You don't even have like the capacity to understand that before. Yeah. So it's all good. Yeah, uh, that's very true. What you said. And um, I have to bring it up because yesterday I went surfing. Uh-huh. Right. But then I remember before I went out, you said, you know, just pay attention to you. Don't pay attention to other people. (laughs) Right. And it's very similar in business because uh, before starting off, you're like, man, I want to be there. Yeah. And you start comparing yourself. You're like, I'm never going or I mean, I want to be there. Mm -hmm. Right. Am I not there now? I want to be there now. Yeah. You get very impatient. And it, it was the same thing with. Uh, my surfing experience is mm. that I always look at the other guys uh, shredding it up, and I was like, I want to be there. Why? It's they? hard not to though. Yeah. You're out there with them. Yeah, you're out there with them. But then the moment that you put that in my head, and the moment I started to go out there, I just focused on myself. Yeah. Because when I focus on others, I eat crap. Yeah. Yeah. I I start to forget about what, what I'm on doing. this board. Yeah. Yeah. And then True. I start. I don't know. I start feeling like I'm not good. Mm. So when that feeling starts to come in, then I just don't get anything. Like embarrassed or something? Yeah, I start viewing that all these people around me are just looking at me and how shitty I am and that I'm not, I shouldn't be out here. Dude, that's how I used to feel about dancing. Yeah. And I felt so liberated to do, I, I was surprised at myself. Yeah. To go dance. Um, I said, I'm going to dance when I hear Michael Jackson, I'm going to go. Yeah. And I'm like, are you guys with me? Yes or no, whatever. But I didn't give a fuck. Like, that's the first time I actually, like, for, for reals, like, that I would actually not have to wait for somebody else to come and dance with me. Yeah. I just went. I didn't care. I was by myself. And then I, m- I made a friend. But that was cool. Yeah. But um, that's the first time that I went and danced. And that was good. By myself. And I was like, dope. Because, and I'm on this kick because I'm trying to get over my... um. I'm going to say anxiety once, but I'm trying to switch it with the term uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. So when I say uncomfortable, I mean I'm anxious. But you did a good job of just going out there because I know that feeling. That's why I didn't go out there. I was like, someone's going to look at me. Someone's going to look at me. Someone's going to judge my dance. I'm not like spot on with the fucking thriller dance, whatever. But I'm like... I was having so much fun and I wasn't drunk this time. So I I could like dance the way I want to dance. Mm-hmm. And then I had shoes on, of course. And then that that's what it felt like in the, from that little lesson, I was like, I'm going to do this. I'm going to try to do this and everything else that I want to do. But I always feel like somebody's watching me yeah, or somebody's judging me or I'm going to feel stupid. I'm not going to hit the note right or whatever. Right. Like go for it. It's just you. It's just your experience. It's just you. And then Nat was like, who gives a fuck? And I was like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and yeah. uh, I got a, such a positive response from your cousins, too. And they could really see me for me, too. And I, yeah. I always feel like I'm reserved, you know. Yeah. I have to be very, like, I don't know how I have to be or whatever. Yeah. Well, um, they're starting to see you as you. Yeah, they're starting to see me yeah. as me. Even your aunts, you know. Yeah. You know, and I was like, "This is cool. I like this. It feels very warm." And and the fact that when we all went to eat, they were so accommodating to my um, my diet restrictions, and I thought yeah. that was so 
kind. I was like really touched by that because I know it's like I feel guilty. Like every time we go out, like yeah, oh shit, I gotta think about what I'm gonna eat, and then well, everybody else is gonna ask Natalie me. Natalie also this? broke the you ice know? with that as well. I mean, she's a vegetarian. <laughs> Everyone else eats meat, mm -hmm. so I mean, the entire family. Yeah, yeah. And it's great that Natalie is so strong to advocate oh, yeah. for others too. And, you know, she'll never, she'll never let it down that she's not, she doesn't have that voice, you know, that yeah. inner strength. And I thought that was very empowering. And I, I took in what she said to me very seriously. So oh, she's, and I'm, she's always been it's great. strong in the family. <laughs> it's great. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. So, um, very vocal, very vocal. Yeah. Yeah. I like it. I like it. Definitely a, a, a counteract to the Asian woman, yeah. you know, stereotype, which I lived that half my life. So, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I think that was uh, it. Was there anything you want to add um, to what was the topic again? So I the can second class citizen. And then you said another one. Uh, interdependence. Mm, codependence. Yeah. yeah. Um, um, oh yeah, I do want to add something. Okay. So um, I think, and I think you've been having a lot of more progress in yourself. So I want to make note of it, which uh -huh. is, you know, you used to, you still have a tendency to depend on me for everything. Yeah. <laughs> like going out. Everything. Yeah. So to be your mom, to be your best friend, to be your lover, to be your business partner, yeah. to be your best friend, to be your um, sports partner, like all these things, right? Yeah. And like I, I understand why, you know, I understand all that stuff. But um, and I was I, I still encourage you now when I when I understood that I was like you need more male friends or you need more interactions with other people. Mm -hmm. And so I always try to encourage you to go out and even going to to the store, you would depend on me to go with you. Yeah. You know, either maybe because you're bored or something and you don't want to go if I don't want to go. Yeah. And I'm like. I feel it's boring. like, yeah, it is boring. <laughs> and I feel, yeah. I was like telling you before, I was like, when I used to not have, when I was not so uncomfortable going out and leaving the house, um, I would go to Target and go Pashal. Pashal is like, um, go out like window shopping, right? Yeah. Or get some stuff and go shopping, whatever. Um, and I would enjoy it, you know, and I have my time to be alone. I have my time to take my time and look at whatever I want to look at. Yeah. And I don't have to talk to nobody. I can just do s something on my own. And I was like, why doesn't she like to do that? I have to go with him everywhere, every time, all like, mm -hmm. and uh, even when you want to get food, you know, and I'm like, I don't even want that food, but you still want me to go. Yeah. And then if I don't want to go, you're like, I don't want to go anymore. And so it feels like to me, uh, like guilty, like, oh, he won't, he won't go eat what he wants to eat because I'm not going. Yeah. You know? And, um, to me, that's like, that's, that's B, like, that's a B player. Yeah. <laughs> and I would get very, uh, like, um, just irritated with it. And then, uh, I was like, man, you need, you need to just go out and do stuff for yourself. So, so is that, what does that have to relate with? That's the, the codependency. Oh, okay. Okay. So you depending on me to just do everything with you. Yeah, yeah. And it's an incredible pressure where it's yeah. like, you're not considering my like uncomfortability yeah. and uh, oh, remember I was like, I took a shower. How many years you know me? I took a shower. I'm not going out anymore. Right. Like yeah. I always say that shit. And then you'd be like, um, oh, you want to go to the pool? And I'm yeah. like, no, I took a shower already. You know, I'm already I'm in my zone. I'm in my routine. I'm ready playing games like I'm done. I'm done for the day. And yeah. You know this. Like, yeah. you know me. Don't act like you don't know me. Yeah. You know, it's been 10, 11 years. I always like to challenge. <laughs> it's not a challenge. Yeah. So you need to understand the difference between challenging your partner and annoying the shit out of them. Yeah. Right. So that's the di big difference. Right. Yeah. The, the time that you got. You know, I said no to you and I was like, before I would feel bad and I'd be like, oh, we can, you know, I'll, I'll word it differently. But I was like, no more. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, no, I'm not going out. And you're like, I'm supposed to spend quality time together. What's up? Like, I don't get that. And I was like, you don't get it. Yes, exactly. You don't get it. And then yeah. I just didn't say anything <laughs> anymore. <laughs> and so I want to explain that right now, which is like, um, you know, somebody saying no to you because yeah. you're because you're done because it's your free time now. Yeah. Now you approach somebody else and be like, okay, stop your free time. Stop what you're doing. Stop your routine. Yeah. It's like, I just fucking met you yesterday. Let's go. 
It's <laughs> not respectful. That's yeah. not quality time. Yeah. That's you being selfish and imposing your will upon somebody else. And I know you're used to doing that with me. Yeah. And I was like, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then and then for me not to take it too personally, I was mad. Yeah. But then I was like, this is going to pass. Yeah. Because now I have this like acceptance uh like it's called act therapy acceptance yeah. uh, where you just accept stuff and you're like it's gonna pass you're like just being dumb right now and you're like you got over it like relatively quickly yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then i got over it and i was like okay i'm gonna talk about this later at some point i kind of like forgot about it till now yeah but um that's, that's the difference that's, that's the difference yeah. yeah you know like uh this codependence of me to be uh, your buddy for everything. It's a little hard. Yeah. So, um, you know, just uh, just try bring bring like awareness to it. And for me too, like, am I just being like I'm closing myself off every time? Mm -hmm. And that's why I do try to make the challenge like, oh, you want to go for a walk? Yeah, let's go for a walk. I should go for a walk. I could have mm -hmm. kept working. Um, but yeah, I should go for a walk. And then that's that's time together. You know, I'm not on my phone. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't even look at my phone, you know, like it's just time together. And I, that's what's quality time, right? Where we can just be, don't have to be talking to each other all the time too, but just to be in each other's presence. Mm -hmm. I think that was nice today too. Yeah. And um, versus I'm done now. <laughs> Stop what you're doing. Yeah. Let's go. Like the heck. Yeah. You know. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> well, what about you? No, I think yeah, I don't I don't have anything. <laughs> I don't think you ever treated me like second class. Because I was the second class. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you were the Oh, yeah, I was bringing you fruits and shit. <laughs> Please, sir. <laughs> Can I have some more? <laughs> But no, I don't think. Why? What are you? What do you want? <laughs> I don't think I ever felt that way from you. Oh, good. Yeah. <laughs> Whoop de doo, Basil. Thank you. <laughs> but if, if you did, I think I would have voiced it as well. I don't know if you yeah. would have. No, think I you... think I, I will be like a little bit angry. Hmm. I don't know. You're good at repressing stuff. Yeah, but then it will come out, huh? <laughs> yeah. In different it, ways. it comes out another way. It'll yeah. be like. Oh, we're not making any money. Yeah. <laughs> like, bitch, we have so much money. <laughs> no, we don't. Okay. <laughs> what? Yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> we're not not so much money, but like we are okay. We're not like gonna die or something. Yeah. You know, you act like we're gonna die. Oh yeah. You act like we're gonna be on the street like tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> like I, I remember my mom saying that. When I spent too much, she's yeah. like, you want to be on the streets? I'm like, no. Uh, so so every time we went to Vaughn's, I kept on uh, looking at corn because corn's only like 25 cents. <laughs> I'm like, so if I'm a hobo, I'll just eat corn. <laughs> way to strategize. Yeah, way to strategize. But I was thinking about that in first grade. I was God like, damn. 25 cents. Okay, let me uh, <laughs> buy that. It's so hard to be a parent, man. Yeah. Yeah. But Yeah, that was good. Good. That was a good, strong topic. I think so. Yeah, you come up with the good, best topics, Ben. Yeah, but it's good that you were able to pull some arrows again and uh, start talking about so many arrows. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> which no, is it's, good. It's cool because now I have uh, feel safe to do it, even though. Oh, I want to bring up something cool. Mm -hmm. A good progress report from us in our relationship, which was. Um, Oh, what were we doing? We were in the car. Remind me why I was really mad. Oh, okay, so we went to Target, and I was like, I'm trying to get over being so uncomfortable leaving the house. Yeah. And I want to um, point this out. So we went to, I was like, let's go to Target because I want to test myself. I want to start making progress with this um, new therapy to push myself to leave the house more and to be okay with it. And... Um, uh, we ended up at Target and everything was going fine. And then uh, we were looking at like toothpaste or something. Sunblock. Sunblock. And then I was trying to be very like sweet like I am in public. And you're very like non-PDA. Mm -hmm. And I'm not PDA either, but I just like to 
touch you a little bit, you know, because we're like out and we're a couple. Yeah. <laughs> That's the <laughs> normal fucking thing to do. Yeah. <laughs> and then you uh, like, uh, and you do this before a lot. Yeah. And uh, I never really said anything before. Right. Mm. But this time you pulled away like this. Yeah. I was like, well, fuck you too. <laughs> and I started walking all fast everywhere. Cause I yeah. was like, I'm fucking mad, but I don't know how to like voice it. Yeah. And I'm not going to do this shit and target like a ghetto ass couple. Yeah. <laughs> so we just did our shit and then went back. And then I was like, I was so pissed because it was like the last straw. Basically. It's mm. not really a big deal, but in the scheme of 11 years of being together, it's like now it's a big deal. Yeah. And, um, but we did so great because you were like, what's wrong? And you were so patient with me. You were yeah. so like, eh. <laughs> but I know like the immediately when I, when, when you went like that and then yeah. you felt my energy change yeah. and then you were like, oh, <laughs> 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 yeah. and I was like, fuck you. <laughs> and then, and then we, uh, when we were in the car, you're still, you know, trying to be very gentle with me. That always helps. I'll tell you that. Yeah. It always helps me calm down to just, ah, <laughs> yeah. are you okay? What's wrong? <laughs> right. That really helps. Even though if you don't feel that, but I'm telling you now, it, it always really well, helps good me to know. Yeah. calm down and like, okay, he's, he took the first step. It's always great if you take the first step. Uh, because well, I remember you saying that it, it's better to say sorry than not to say anything. Mm -hmm. So I it's harder like, for me to come back so down. So I was like, oh, okay, let's just do it right now. <laughs> yeah. No, but you didn't say sorry yet. I said, pull out your arrows. Yeah, right you now. said, what is it? Pull out your arrows. And then yeah. that's the magic word because I, I like to pull out arrows, right? Yeah. So it was like, it was motivating. I was like, but I was so afraid. Honestly, when we were driving back, I had to really muster the courage to tell you yeah. because I feel like irrational. I feel emotional. I feel like I'm not going to make sense and I'm scared that I'm not going to make sense or that it's uh, I'm being unfair. But I feel this incredible emotion. And then I was like, I got to do, I got to do, I got to do, I got to do it like this, just like hyping myself up. And then I was like, I don't like it when you pull away from me. <laughs> Yeah, there. <laughs> I, remember, I remember that. <laughs> and, I like, and I was like, I was like, oh. that did like a baby. <laughs> that's, what like, little, oh, that's what little it. kids would do, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay. Oh, good. You told you me, me, you know. <laughs> and and uh, and I love that you're so rational and not like not and not saying something like the fuck that's so stupid, <laughs> you know, like <laughs> you're so small, or you know, but you you yeah. um were understanding. Yeah. It's like I felt hurt. I was like, oh, cool. You see, I'm hurt. You see that it hurts. Yeah. And then I was like, and then I, and then I went into my little rant or something and I was like, oh, you can touch me whenever. Yeah. That was a big deal to me. It's like, you can do whatever. You can slap my but, ass or you can, you, you can grab me yeah. anytime. Right. Yeah. And I'm like, okay like i'm yours whatever yeah but then if i just want to like touch you and like in yeah. target oh don't don't fucking touch me it's like fuck you <laughs> <laughs> you know like this i i would just snap because yeah. it's not to me it's like hey i'm at your level you can't just touch me when fucking ever you yeah. know what i mean so to me it was more about uh it was about equality but it was also you rejecting my care hmm. And that feels very like the fuck. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you want to be caring and loving and all that stuff, and you want it to be received or yeah. returned. It's like, uh, I, I, I have and to then say, I was like, like the, I have to say, it, it kind of spawned from my relationship with my father. <laughs> 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 yeah, it's like, like you said, like, yeah, um, I don't know how to receive things. Mm -hmm. I don't know how to receive care even though i know people around me do care or physical touch yeah, yeah physical touch like i just pull away from that because i feel like if you get too close to me you may leave me or something like that mm. yeah it's weird interesting yeah. but it's mm -hmm. always been like that mm -hmm. yeah i know <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> i've been trying to make you realize it yeah mm -hmm. yeah this yeah. fear of intimacy that you have yeah and the reason why you're so like Oh, somebody's looking at me or like yeah. if we're being like cuddly or whatever in public, it's like, who gives a fuck? Yeah. I'm like, thank God I'm not, I'm not too like 
I, I'm and I understand. Like, don't be like freaking Frenching in mm-hmm. front of families. <laughs> yeah, it's like inappropriate, right? Yeah, but just to hold hands or just to be um, loving, I think, or yeah. sweet or sweet to each other, even. Sweet. You know, sometimes like when we were working, you're so cold, you know, before now you've you've really changed because, well, for one, if you feel my energy, you'd be like, oh, oh. Yeah. <laughs> but before you're just so cold. Yeah. Like, <laughs> OK, I know we're working, but damn, dude, <laughs> you know, like the whole point of being a couple in business and we're selling this image of being this happy couple in business, yeah. but not fucking happy. Like, don't fucking touch me. <laughs> so it, it, it's like uh, um, you use the word hypocritical, yeah. right? And it's, that's exactly what it was. It's like, oh, I can do it, but you can't. Yeah. And there was just a lot of double standard going on mm-hmm. uh, when we first started to date in our relationship. And when I pointed out before, you know, we get defensive and you're like, why am I always wrong? Mm-hmm. I'm like, you're not always wrong. It's just you're doing things that are like mean or whatever, not caring. And then, but if you do it, it's okay. Mm-hmm. It's like, doesn't make sense, right? Yeah. So I'm so I'm so glad, like, it's a great, like I was saying in the other show, it's like that we don't, we don't just come onto the show and do and say good shit and then not carry it over into the real world of our relationship that was a big deal to me because i think i'm in a i'm a a little bit i have a performer in me Hmm. and i would have the tendency to show my best self in the camera Hmm. and not do what i say yeah in our relationship you pushing me to be like hey pull out your arrows right yeah i was like i just was tested i was like but i had to do it and yeah. that's the time, yes, to challenge me. Yeah. And then when I need to be challenged, and then and then we did it, and we're like, oh, cool. I mean, I was Sometimes, still a little mad, but like I was like, yeah, I was proud of us, and I was proud of you to, to do that, and proud of me to step up to the plate when you asked me to. Yeah, but sometimes you don't even realize you were challenging. <laughs> I, know, I didn't realize I, know. I, I I didn't know I was going. To I know you. because I said I had to. I was like, I'm so scared to tell you. That is sure. challenging yeah. when you're you're living i would say yeah it is very challenging yeah, yeah and i get mad quickly you know yeah. so I, <laughs> but you do have a shorter fuse than i do yeah yeah like my my i would get mad and then it comes down mm-hmm. like your <laughs> rebound rate is really good yeah i mean you have a your your different um <coughs> rise in temperature is in anxiety mm-hmm. or like in things having to deal with like money you know what's attached to these like assets yeah and that kind of makes more sense, right? It's a little bit more logical to be scared of things that are going to affect our life and in our future. Whereas I get very, very emotional with things with just like uh, emotion. Out. Well, I wouldn't say I wouldn't compare it. See, yeah. that's myself being all second class yeah, you, and shit. You don't get mad when someone doesn't pay us right away. Yeah. Whereas I do. Yeah, you um, do. You're like, ah, <laughs> call those, send me emails. I was like, dude, they're fucking sleeping. But <laughs> well, you want to yeah. get paid, you know? I get it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But me, like, I'm more like, our relationship, you know? Yeah. Emotionality, <laughs> you know? So, but that's why I see you as a good team. Yeah. Where you'll be emailing people at like two in the morning, they're like not gonna do shit, and you're yeah. worried about it from the time that you sent that email to the time that you woke up. Versus, I can't do anything about it right now. I'm gonna go to sleep and I'll send an email in the morning. So yeah. no big deal. It's the same shit. The same results gonna happen. You mm-hmm. know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Whether you send it at two or you send it it's at seven. It's just very future tense, right? I mean, futuristic, right there. I get it, but that's yeah. why I just I'm gonna do it. You know, like yeah. I'm gonna do it later. So yeah. Relax. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was good. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about all that stuff. I was like, what are we going to talk about? But it's good. It's always like it's raw. It's from the heart, you mm-hmm. know, what we do. So. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think you did a really good job, Bim. Oh, And you did, too. Thanks, Bim. Yeah, you did. I mean, it takes a lot of effort to break through and that was the really pattern into fight your mind mm-hmm. that yeah to rebound mm-hmm. if you can yeah yeah i think i'm getting better it does test you a lot though yeah yeah i know that feeling yeah yeah 
it's just the same feeling like if you can do something different for your business it's the same challenge almost yeah so you've been doing this uh thing that you always been doing for so long and it became a crazy tradition and crazy habit that you can't break mm-hmm. so it's the same yeah i know that it's yeah the struggle is real the struggle is <laughs> real yeah yeah but we're doing good, I think, yeah. you know, and, and transferring the lessons that we have here into real life. And we're about to go away. So I know there's going to be at some point I'm probably going to get mad at something mm-hmm. <laughs> or be challenged or get uncomfortable. Yeah. Um, but, you know, like we're just going to get through it. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> Ew. you should just yawn. and don't oh, have okay. a weird face <laughs> like that. Yeah. You're like, <laughs> something <laughs> happened to your brain. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <I'm back. laughs> too, too many things. Yeah. I, I always win on the talking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> too many talking. No, you did good. You did good. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else you want to share? No, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> and this shit. <laughs> that's it. That's it. <laughs> All right, cool. You can close us out. But um, yeah, thank you guys. I hope you enjoyed that topic yeah. about second class citizen. Um, you can check us out on Spotify. And codependency. And codependency and inter- interdependence. Interdependence. And, Intergalactic. Uh, and, how, and how to, you know, be patient when you're pissed off. <laughs> <laughs> or how to find the courage to challenge yourself challenge yourself and yeah. step up to the plate yeah when you when you need to so yeah you guys can listen to us on spotify anchor itunes pretty much everything <laughs> <laughs> social media you fucking everywhere yeah yeah but um thank you for tuning in yeah to pass the aisle we'll see you next time i'm gonna close out with henry Bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>